Okay, so the next game we're talking about is Ninja Gaiden, which was nominated by at Antonio Damase. Is that, I guess it's like, is that Damase, Damace, too? Antonio, if he's Italian, I guess it'd be, yeah. Anyway, Antonio. Do the accent. No, I I will not. No. You don't want to be. I've done, I've I've already, like, I've besmirched every nation in Europe at this point. I really probably got to (laughs) stop. At Antonio Damase 2 on Twitter, it was developed by Tecmo. It was published by Tecmo uh, for the Famicom, NES, and PC Engine. Uh, its earliest release date and territory was December 9th, 1988, in, I guess, Japan. And the uh, PC Engine version was based on the arcade game, though. Yay. Was it? I think yeah. it was. I know the Master System version is completely different. Yeah, I think uh, I'm going to have to hazard an uh, uneducated guess that Ninja Gaiden Arcade is a two-player, Double Dragon-style beat-em-up that is slog slow. And it's terrible. Basic enemies are based on Jason Voorhees just because they could. And they brought some of those basic enemies back for the NES game. But other than I that, the they NES were, game's I believe different. they were developed concurrently. The, the yeah, two. I think you're right. Um uh, it also came out uh, for the Super Nintendo without any changes. It was just d- dumped onto a cart with the other two NES games. They didn't like, add a couple of colors or something? I don't think so. I, I mean, if they did, they did. I, you can't tell. It still looks I'm pretty looks sure really it was bright redraws with, like, instead of one shade of blue, it was two shade of blue. It's like a it's real... the ugliest bright redraws I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, it, they yeah. weren't very helpful. It's true. I think it was Chris Kohler who said he he just calls it uh, "Get to the Castle" um, because he just turns the game off after the cutscene where you see the castle. Because after that, <laughs> it gets really unfair. So. After that, it gets unfair. It's pretty. Uh, those birds are, I think, the original unfair video game birds. Of yes, all time. being birds. Yeah. Yeah, they hover which doesn't add up at all. They just stay... Like, I played it again recently, as I, I felt I should for this show, and there are so many hovering birds and bees and whatnot that they just would not do today. It's a very special time in video game physics where they just thought it would be okay to let a bee just stay in, in one place until you kill it. Well, one of the item drops, I swear to God, is a bald, e- bald eagle. Like, it's just yeah. floating there. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and then you kill bald eagles to get shurikens. Like, that's the game. <laughs> or just uh, really, really pointless point, uh, pickups that I are just blue bottles that make you feel good. I'm just going to drop a hot take here. Mm. This game is Castlevania with better controls. Whoa. Mm. That's mm. hot. That is a hot take. Yes. Uh, so Tang is like screaming somewhere right now. <laughs> For me, the key to the the appeal, I would say, uh, of both games is very similar in that you want to be. This was an era where they thought if you want to make people feel like an action star, you have to kill them like a lot, and then they feel so good about themselves (laughs) when they finally don't die. So you've got this huge life bar in both Castlevania and uh, NES Ninja Gaiden, but like two hits and you're dead anyway because everything does. It's just there to taunt you. It's not. Just to make you feel like you're you lucky have a chance. if you get two hits in. By the end of the game, it's like, oh, you got hit, you fell off a cliff. Yeah, like, constant cliffs. In, in, uh, it's in just like, oh, it's cliffs. I, I got to jump in before while we're still talking about birds to an extent. Oh, I was please. informed that Hayabusa actually means peregrine falcon. So basically, <laughs> Ryu Hayabusa is weak to birds. It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> it, or, or, or Ryu, or Ryu, uh, however you pronounce it, uh, is Dragon, right? Dragon Peregrine Falcon is his name? Yeah, that, that would be his name. That is his... his That's like if a, a, the Mobile British Bulldog name. was called Bulldog Tyrannosaurus instead. <laughs> and they just went with... How can you do that? You can't have two animal names. Note they to did. self, change the name <laughs> to Bulldog Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> It's like almost as good as Dog's Bower. Oh, oh, but very few things are Dog's Bower. That's uh, Blue Stinger, right? Oh, yeah, classic. Dog's Bower is uh, the patron saint of this podcast. <laughs> as he should be. So I was, I, I'm yeah, going go to say Castlevania 1 is a better game than Ninja Gaiden. Because Castlevania 1, very uh, meticulous, perfectly crafted in terms of 
giving the player opportunity to space themselves just right away from enemies uh, or completely screw up and end up getting murdered. So the, the tension is always just right for me. And it's very much a game about spacing yourself exactly a whip's distance away from enemies uh, at just the right time. So right. you get them before they can get you. Love that. Ninja Gaiden, you got a very, very short sword and it's just dumb and mean. Um, not to say I don't love Ninja Gaiden. The music yeah. is incredible. I listen to it all the time. And uh, some of the ideas for the boss designs, the, the cutscenes, I absolutely love. Still, we'll watch They're not cutscenes. Cut they're Tecmo Theater, according to the manual. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. And I, uh, they were very influential on but my ideas about a lot of different things. It couldn't have been the very first game to have some kind of cutscene, could it? No, I, I actually, well, I talked with Ron Gilbert not that long ago, who did Monkey Island, and he... Oh, yeah, I mean, imagine had something you would call cutscenes. He, that's actually the first time it was coined, was for um, Maniac Mansion and the game before that, that David Fox worked on. It was the Labyrinth game. That was actually the first, like, point-and-click LucasArts game, was uh, Labyrinth, starring... Uh, David Bowie. Well, not so much starring, but he's in at the end. Anyway, sorry for the tangent. Not the yeah, first I mean, scene. Well, Generally, it, in terms of... Uh, it's definitely kind of the popularizer of the whole, like, intro with, uh, like, original art, and then outro oh, yeah. with original art. Like, it... Sure. There's, there's no doubt that people played Ninja Gaiden and were like, holy crap, it's telling me the actual story instead of just running. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does, it's not all in the manual, and you just have to read it, and you're like, I don't see how any of this syncs up, which is what it usually was in the NES era. Mm -hmm. but, Amusingly, uh, the manual does basically tell you what happens in every cutscene and throughout the game anyway, for some reason. Just in case. Um, so the, to see it on screen and they have music that was scored for it and everything, it felt fantastic at the time. It was amazing at the time. Mm -hmm. Especially I since would, like nin ninjas were shit hot at the time. Like, oh, just, whoa, ninjas, and they're actually <laughs> ninjuring on screen. It's hard for kids today to remember this, or to know they don't remember it because they weren't alive yet. But ninjas had only been in pop culture for like a couple of years. They weren't burnt out 30-year-old tropes at this point. This it was a totally thing. new thing. Yeah. yeah, it felt so new. American Ninja, uh, wasn't that the name of the series? Or Ninja yeah. Warrior? American Ninja Warrior? It's a very mustache ninja time period here. <laughs> um, the So the thing, the thing that, I mean, there's... A, I just want to point out like how weird Ninja Gaiden was at the time. Not only did it have the cutscenes, mm -hmm. the cutscenes were in like the very anime style, which unless you watched like a lot of Voltron or something, which like, I did, was not. Yeah, well, yeah, we. Oh, all, I guess that's true. Okay, so maybe it wasn't <laughs> that weird, but but you got a lot. I mean, it was it was not doctored up to for for the Western audience. I mean, they kept call they called it Ninja Gaiden. Uh -huh. I mean, what the hell? Like, what it's are you guy, thinking? It was like, yeah. like yeah. Hey, Ankyo yeah. Alien well, they didn't, over they here didn't translate the name properly. They just thought they they took they got the word ninja right, and they're like, well, the Japanese name doesn't make any sense. We'll call it Gaiden. And it's like that means side story. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, you can't. Uh, I, I don't uh, d fault them for not calling it Ninja Side Story. Nobody would have uh, bought that. They would have looked for the main story and been unable to find it and went home. <laughs> Was this the one that had one of the games was like subtitled like uh, or not subtitled but but it's uh, had like a title something like Ninja in USA? Was that the yeah like, yeah I that's think one it of my was. favorite yeah that's uh -huh. one of my favorite game titles. I think that's more to do with the arcade version. Mm -hmm. Ninja in USA, <laughs> and that's what it was about. You, it you were on its prompts. <laughs> absolutely, and that's also Ninja Gaiden, as far as I know. At least starts in the USA when you have to yeah, so, kill a um, guy with a hatchet. J just to not throw anyone off, the Japanese name translates from Legend of the Ninja Dragon Sword, which is a very descriptive name for the game because the mm. whole game centers around that. And mm -hmm. over in Europe, and I think Australia, we got to call it Shadow Warriors because, of course, we'd call it that. That makes sense. Well, if kids read the word ninja, their brains would immediately explode in a violent fantasy that they would enact without delay. <laughs> well, so, the thing is, it, it worked. The, how many Ninja Gaiden games have they made since then? People were like, ooh, so exotic, a Gaiden. I wonder what that is. I, I think they've made at least no less than eight Ninja Gaiden titles. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. There was, uh, there was a prequel on phones, I guess, uh, to the NES game. 
that came out not that long ago, I think five or six years ago. Is it just ago. that scene where the guy's dad gets killed? <laughs> you go and talk to your dad, and then he's like, I think I'll go get killed now at the end. I have to go <laughs> get the mail, and then, oh my god, the red ninja. But then he's, and spoilers for Ninja Gaiden NES, he's not dead. He's like the sixth boss or something. You fight him later. Oh, Pretty good story! Do I, get, I don't think I ever got, I've never finished Yeah, good luck game. getting to the sixth boss. It's I always, because, so... We gotta we gotta mention this because it is gonna be time to rank this, and we do have to point out this game has a bug that they knew about and left in. What? The whole thing about not continuing in the last like how it, it continues back to like the third to last level is that it? Yeah, uh, yes, yeah, uh, six one to six three, you have to complete in one infamous uh, marathon slog of which insanity. is which is why which is why it's called get to the castle, and then you can turn <laughs> your machine off, and because it gets really hard, and then if you die, you just start back off like three levels ago. If you die on the oh, boss, wow. you know, if you die on the boss, a... I think you get to restart with the boss, right? Is it that? Uh, and what happens is, um, you if you beat a boss in that marathon of of rounds. The boss will stay dead once you get back to them after having died and re-clearing the area. So basically... No way. Really? Yeah, apparently. I didn't Weird. get that far, but that's what I have read. Um, I have that, beaten this game before. That if you, and... if you beat the boss and you die in the bosses that are after that, you get booted back to the start of the sequence... But if you get back up to there, the bosses will be dead, apparently. That is weird, because if it's a bug as... as uh... As this has been claimed, I think it's been claimed by somebody who worked on the series at some point. I think it was the artist. It's it's on it's on HG one hundred and one. It's like it's it's, it's entirely book. possible it was a bug, and then they just went, well, we'll flag the bosses as dead, so they don't have to play. What, it what that guy it. said, and I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, um, but we ha- it's up there. It's on hardcoregaming one hundred and one It's one of our uh, maybe you've very, heard of it. yeah, perhaps you have yeah. <laughs> it, he says something like it's a bug that we knew about and we left it in because we thought we want this to. It's okay for Americans because they'll just keep bashing their head against it until they beat it. Yeah, they really they hate Americans. No, they didn't hate it. They thought that, like, if it were Japanese gamers, you're like, well, they're going to get frustrated and quit. Yeah, they fixed mm-hmm. it. Americans in the Japanese keep... version, you can continue in the in the further parts of that level. So How did I that... ever beat? I beat this game. I distinctly remember hitting that weird orb in the center of another kind of H.R. Geiger-looking boss we were just talking about those sure you're uh, not with like ninja gaiden 2 which is a little bit more doable it's probably the most doable no i beat them both for sure yeah. well, um, i never beat ninja, ninja gaiden too. is a commitment to just repeating the same task over and over and hoping yeah. you get it just that millisecond at the right time it and is. that you can do it about a dozen times in a sequence and then you're like all right i've beat the level then i'm never doing that again in my life just to try to get it just right all, uh, uh, over and over and over again. So that's the kind of gameplay I often get into. And Ninja Gaiden is not dissimilar. So, yeah, I beat it. I don't remember that bug, but I'll try it again. I'll, I'll report back. So the ranking. We should rank it. <clears throat> I would put it... Uh, I, I it, This is a tough one. Yeah. Because mm. I have a lot of affection for this game in a way, even though I kind of... The highs are highs and the lows are low on this game. It's yeah, not, I mean, uh, some of its parts. I mean, part of this thing and this, this experience is that I feel like they, they, they had this game and then they deliberately made it way too hard. Like, they knowingly did it. It wasn't even incompetence. It was just but like. I beat it and I was like 10 or something. I mean, 10 year olds can beat any game in existence. That's not a good metric. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> Why are you they know, so good? You've got so many people who just like, you know, they're like, Oh, this game is physically impossible. Yeah, but when I was ten, I just somehow beat it. And like this they, is true. You pick it up. It, you're like twenty or thirty. You're just like I have I, literally no idea how I could ever even get past the first stage. You can you can climb on walls. Um, there's like a not wall jumping, but it's kind of like a wall stinking. Yeah, they call it wall it. spring in the manual, which is probably it is really not springing. The worst it, it, way to describe it, and it just doesn't roll off your tongue at all, but they call it Wall Spring Jump. Well, it's a nice name, but the reality is you're basically just very wet and stick to surfaces and can't get off them. It's like this, yeah. like, Velcro wall thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. American like Gladiators. Have against, yeah. Um, the best thing Ninja Gaiden 2 did was make you actually climb up and down the walls, and that really helped. Oh, yeah. Ninja Gaiden 2 should be ranked higher than Ninja Gaiden 1 on this darn list. Oh, yeah. If and. Ninja Gaiden 2 ever makes it because it was a much more fair 
much more just physically enjoyable game to play where you didn't feel as though I mean Ninja Gaiden is uh like giving public speaking uh classes to naked people and <laughs> like trying to help them to be comfortable. It's just the least relaxed time you can have in a video game. <laughs> Or like uh, your first day of swimming lessons. Guess what? The pool is full of syrup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're you're in trouble when you decide to play that game for sure. Well, I'm gonna help. I'm gonna throw out that Ninja Gaiden should go right between rats, and I have no mouth and I must scream. Wow! Damn, he's shooting at love. That's wow! Low. I thought you were even I burn. think that's a. That's kind of harsh. It's a sick burn. No, it's it's not a game you want to play. <laughs> I like. I agree. Like, it's in terms of recommending this game to someone. I would have to probably not like that person. Right. <laughs> so I just like you know. I want to see you suffer for a few hours. So definitely play Ninja Gaiden. Okay. Try and beat it. I'm nostalgic for it. I'm playing it again now, like I mentioned, and I'm enjoying the okay. the the music and the cutscenes. I still yeah, love a lot. Great. The boss designs are not clever. It's not like, oh, how did I figure out how to beat that boss? It's like you don't like up. slow walking hatchet man. <laughs> yeah, well, what's your problem? Yeah. <laughs> There's okay, some what about, really like, cool designs. Yeah. Real quick, what about oh, between like Shadow Man and Donkey Kong Country Three? I was looking a little oh. lower than that, honestly. It is not better than Donkey Kong Country Three, and I don't even like Donkey Kong Country at all. I don't like any of those games. Uh, For me but personally, they're at least well. Country games. three on this list is like the the last good game. Like I'd be careful, but I think Team Buddies is fantastic. Basically. Oh, I love Uniracers though. That's a hoot. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Uniracers is too low on this list. Um, yeah. Oh, I love Mega no, Man Zero too no, as well. It's not scientifically accurate. It's right <laughs> in the disclaimer at the beginning. <laughs> It is exactly where it belongs. Um, Even if it got there by coin flip, it's still yeah. The coin uh, flip is the science. most accurate thing we have. Like that, genuinely, put, it's. I would. Put, I, I'm going to put uh, Ninja Gaiden a little bit higher because I do think the cutscene thing, although it would have been done eventually by somebody else, mm-hmm. um, it just the the idea they had the chutzpah to yes. put this whole thing out to the American market, uh, leaving the bug in aside. Um, just the idea of like, we're not going to dumb this down. We're not going to like change the graphics like Blaster Master or change the, the name to something like more American friendly, although they did change the name, of course. But um, we're just going to present it as uh, what it is. Mm-hmm. And, and they, had, they had some kind of, they thought enough of, of the Western audience to give it to us in the way they did. Mm-hmm. And um, Without, I mean, look at Contra, right? Contra had like uh, not exactly cutscenes, but it had little like interstitial, cool sprite art and some extra animations and other cool stuff, like a little map. And they cut all that stuff out because so they're like, nobody's gonna care. Let's like keep it moving. Wow. You know? yeah, yeah, that's mean. But they didn't um, do that, and they, they also didn't... didn't give us a thirty guys code in Ninja Gaiden. They said, well, you, yeah. you can do this. So I, I, I would put Ninja Gaiden uh, right. I, Rainbow I'll, I'll Islands. Say, you're going to give it the Rainbow Island spot? No, I, I'd put it right below, uh, right above Lethal Enforcers. How about that? That's, I was looking there. NFL actually. Blitz above, Lethal Enforcers below, or right in between. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I, put it below NFL Blitz, that's just me. Yeah. I mean, the main thing I think is that this game, I mean, I think it is more the cutscenes and all the little things that aren't the actual kind of overly Playing it? punishing game yeah like uh-huh. <laughs> we we can respect the amount of like stuff that it brought to the table and i think it's okay to place it there it's just as mm. long as it's like yeah but you know this game is a game that you played in its time this is a it is fun game. it is still fun if you get yourself in that mindset it just at the end it just gets ridiculous but it's a game where i i seldom say i'm a slave to nostalgia um i like stuff for what it is, I think I'm usually pretty clear about that, but there's no way I'd like Ninja Gaiden if I didn't already love it from when I was a kid. When I play it, it it's strictly because yeah. I get that kid feeling again. I still do enjoy it for that reason, but um, man, I mean, when's the fun part? Yeah, it's just really punitive, like in a way that isn't enjoyable 
Uh, and I love Punitive. One Thousand Nights Spikes, one of my punitive, favorite games so. ever. But that's Ooh. like it's a very it's a very different kind of Punitive. I think like that's a a, a contract Smart. you are signing. Like the name alone. Like, what's the, what's sure. the fun punitive? Is it is it called like punishment? Like what what is it? Like, <laughs> that's we gotta this one. We gotta. Stop I find this it so interesting out. that this one, uh, like around level three or four, it's like wow, I'm actually having fun, and then it's like well, say goodbye to that because level five and six is coming. It's like well, fuck it, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, does everybody agree with me then? It sounds like it. Above lethal enforcers. Yeah. That's cool because Lethal and Thorses is actually not excellent. No, it's not. <laughs> no, <laughs> it it's, I, I, would, I think they look beautiful together, actually, because I like them for the same reasons. <laughs> yeah. Like, I like them for what they were thinking, but not what they actually did. Yeah, they're two games that definitely belong in a museum, but behind, like, bulletproof glass. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do. I do.